Hello, everyone. Oh, now, now it's working. Hello, hello. So, as I was saying, I'm incredibly grateful and excited for being here in this um, first edition of uh, Rails World. So, a very quick introduction. Um, well, my name is Jorge Manrubia. I work at 37 Signals as a lead programmer. In terms of Rails and open source, I'm the main author behind Active Record Encryption and its uh, companion gems, such as Console 1984. And uh, since this is a Rails conference, you might find interesting uh, a series of, of articles I'm writing on how we do Rails at 37 Signals, which is called uh, Code I Like, and you can check it out in the company's uh, development blog. So, Turbo. I'm going to start telling you about my favorite Turbo feature. And this is the foundational idea. This is the idea that when you're going to render a web page, if instead of loading the new content in a new HTML document, you re replace the body of the, of the existing document, you get a much faster operation. Because you don't need to reprocess all the JavaScript and CSS code. And you can, you can combine that when, with handling the URL change and the browser history under the hood to get a seamless, much faster navigation. And you know what? It took me um, a long time to appreciate this idea. It took me years. And I know because when I was, um, when TurboLynx was released in 2012, when David made the announcement, I remember feeling incredibly disappointed. I remember feeling like they were aiming at the wrong target. Because back then, I believed that the single page application paradigm was kind of the future and kind of the right approach for a wide variety of applications. So I was, also I was convinced that Rails was going to provide some kind of answer in that space. And the, the answer I got was kind of a middle finger answer <laughs> with TurboLynx. Um, so anyway, I pursued my, my uh, vision and my opinions. And after many years of um, fighting uh, you know, with JavaScript, after a lot of battles, after trying many different approaches and, and frameworks uh, for solving the same problems, when, when Rails announced Stimulus in 2018, I revisited the whole proposal from Rails, and a lot of things clicked for me, which is a common, a common thing uh, in people that came to appreciate Hotwire and, and Turbo. A lot of things clicked, and in particular, the, the full body replacement idea clicked hard. And back then, in 2018, I wrote an article with a bunch of reflections about the single page application paradigm that I think essentially most of the points I made there are totally valid now, five years later. So, when we are talking about the front end of web applications, if we just focus on programmer happiness alone, I believe that the best programming model we found is the, is the traditional HTTP request full page response programming model. The very boring and not exciting model that Rails nailed in version one. I repeat, in terms of programming happiness, I have never seen a better programming model than that. All the things I've seen within Rails or in its ecosystem or outside of Rails feel like a more or less steep downgrade in programmer happiness compared to that model. And the reason, I believe, is that this model presents two interrelated characteristics. It's very simple and it's incredibly productive. You can think of your application as a set of standalone screens. You can focus on the initial rendering for those, 
which is a well-solved problem in Rails. And then you can reuse that work for handling your interactions. Like when the user submit a form, when, the, uh, when, when they press a button, you can just re-render everything again. And that's incredibly productive. To me, the body replacement idea from TurboLinks is revolutionary because it improves responsiveness and UI fidelity without sacrificing that programming model even a bit. And that idea of putting programming happiness first is, uh, to me, is, well, it's one of the Rails doctrine pillars, the first one, optimized for programming happiness, but in the front-end space is alien level rare. Like, in the front-end, we always chase capabilities, and then we try to build programming models to make, to, to make those capabilities fit in. Here we are saying, okay, no, the programming model comes first, programming, ca programming happiness comes first, and then we are going to see how, how we can make things faster. Now, of course, the full body replace replacement, there are scenarios and situations where it doesn't give you the UI fidelity you want. And after its last revision uh, with the uh, Hotwire launch, Turbo got two new tools to perform high fidelity, more high fidelity updates in an application, Turbo Stream Actions and Turbo Frames. Turbo Frames let you express these screen regions, let you capture these screen regions uh, that you want to update. It lets you update them in a pretty seamless way, and it lets you define local navigation context within them. Stream Actions uh, lets you execute JavaScript in a declarative way, um, offering you a standard set of actions, uh, of common DOM operations, and with support for custom stream actions, you can um, execute arbitrary JavaScript. Both are fantastic options. But both, to use both, you are paying, you are paying a happiness tax. And this is why we normally say that Turbo is a progressive framework. You are supposed to start with the happy path, the happiest path, and deviate from it when you want higher fidelity. But you need to do that mindfully. Because of course, if you don't care about developer happiness, if you don't care about productivity, by all means, use Turbo Stream Actions for all your interactions, and your application is going to be super snappy. But that's not the idea. That's not realistic, right? OK, so this is, these are our current ingredients. So let's move forward to uh, last week. Last week, Jason Fried from 37 Signals confirmed that the company was working on a new product, which is going to be a Hey Calendar application. And I, was, uh, I got a wonderful opportunity to work on this uh, opportunity. Oh, sorry, on this application since the beginning. And um, the development of this new product started in February of this year. Okay? There had been some prototyping and some design exploration before that, but the coding itself started in February of this uh, year. And I remember back then in February, I had a meeting with Jeffrey Hardy, is principal programmer in the company, to discuss the technical foundation for this new calendar product. And we were, one of the things we discussed was how we didn't want to end in a, rabbit, in a JavaScript rabbit hole. Because, you know, a calendar application, for a calendar, there is a high bar when it comes to interactivity. And that's kind of a natural call for, for JavaScript heavy uh, uh, code for doing things. Also, the company had a lot of previous experience uh, creating calendar features in their products. So just in the Basecamp line, we have Basecamp 2 with a, with a fancy graphical calendar that uses um, Backbone and MVC in the client under the hood, a heavy JavaScript client. Basecamp 3 um, uses client-side templates for the calendar, and um, also 
a rich set of JavaScript classes for dealing with, with dates and for re rendering the, the calendar widgets. So, but now, you know, we had hotwire, we had stream actions, and we had uh, turbo frames. So we said, okay, we are going to try to avoid that. And we started building the application, and we used the approach I would recommend anyone to use if you are starting a Rails application today. We used the default. We used the happy path of full body replacement, the default you get with Turbo. So with that, with that approach, we started building screens. We started getting things moving to get discussions uh, going on the different interactions and things. And as I was working on these new screens, I kept the, the high fidelity thing always in mind, because it was obvious that we were not getting the fidelity we wanted. We, we were postponing that. And I kept thinking, how we are going to do this? And it started to feel like a burden for three reasons I'm going to explain that are related to what kind of application a calendar is. See, in a calendar application, rendering is complex. It's more complex than in a regular application. That means that partial updates are complex, too. And they are hard to create. So in a calendar application, you have kind of a two-dimensional canvas where, you, where things can take either a little bit of a screen state or a large amount of a screen state. How you render some elements can affect how you render other elements, because they overlap. So it's not like a rendering a list of uh, rows in a table or a list of elements in a container where you append things one after the other. It was way more complex. Partial updates were way more complex. There was no way we were going to solve those with individual standard stream actions, uh, given the rendering constraints we had. And uh, to make things worse, well, this is going to be in the hay line, which, is going, which means that it's going to be a new take on what a calendar is. In practice, this means that we are going to render a bunch of novel elements on top of calendar events. So we are going to render many more types of elements. So those are many more uh, partial updates to take care of. And to make things even worse, we have different views over the same data. That means that we had an explosion of, part of, of partial updates, really a burden when I was thinking about how the hell we are going to do this with turbo streams. And it was a big concern that uh, got me um, start to exploring alternatives. So the problem, the, 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 the chart I was representing before looked like this in my mind. So it was the same problems. I already knew that partial updates, there is an essential complexity tied to them to partial updates, because you can't think of standalone screens anymore. You need to be aware of regions and of the elements you render in every screen region and how the different interactions affect those regions. So there is a structural complexity there that you don't get rid of, no matter which abstraction you use. Um, but in this case, that structural complexity was exacerbated by the nature of the calendar application. So I started to uh, analyze alternatives. And one of the systems I analyzed was Phoenix Leaf View. Phoenix Leaf View uh, from the Elixir world, uh, well, it has a pretty novel approach to everything. But focusing on the fancy rendering and super sophisticated rendering pipeline that it uses, at the end of it, there's a library called MorphDOM that they use to express DOM changes. And the MorphDOM is a, a, tree, a, morph, a DOM tree morphing library. <clears throat> and this is how I uh, well, got curious about morphing and about whether this could uh, solve our problems. The idea of DOM tree morphing is simple, and it's better understood with an example. Imagine that we have the DOM tree on the left, which says, hello world, and we want to render uh, hello Amsterdam. So the regular rendering approach uh, 
would be, okay, we're going to replace one tree with the other, okay? So when you morph uh, one tree into the other, what you do is to apply a minimal set of changes for mutating the input tree into the desired state. So, in this case, we could achieve what we want if we change the content of the text node world, uh, we replace that content with Amsterdam, and we leave the rest of DOM elements untouched. So, when I learned about MorphDOM, the first thing I did was, okay, I'm going to plug in into the calendar prototype we have, and I was blown away by, by how good it felt. For me, it was, oh my God, this is absolutely amazing. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is a much faster way of rendering HTML. But the thing is that when you profile morphing, it's not faster just because browsers are so crazily fast at rendering HTML. A modern browser is incredibly fast at rendering whatever amount of HTML you want. But morphing, the thing is that it felt incredibly better in the scenarios where I was testing it. And the reason is that morphing, with morphing, you maintain, you know, by design, all the client-side screen state in place. That means you maintain scroll position, which is huge, both horizontal and vertical. You maintain um, CSS transition states. You maintain the focus, the selected text, the carrot, if there is a, a, a carrot in some input element. Um, if there are images and they are encached, you won't see them flicker when you morph one DOM tree into, into the other. So the sensations, there, were a, 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 there was an aggregation of things that contributed to much better sensations. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to introduce in Turbo a new concept, which is a page refresh. So a page refresh happens when you are rendering the same page where you are at right now. So when you are in a page and you want to render it again, for example, because you submit a form and you get redirected back, that's going to be a page refresh, and Turbo is going to detect that automatically. Um, the scenario where morphing makes sense is precisely this. When you update some page with, with a new content that is similar, has a similar structure to the content you are updated, because you want to see the difference in a smooth way. So it doesn't make sense to morph a whole page into a completely different one, because you get no benefit. The browser is better than morphing to do that. But when you, when you are updating the same page, it really can feel so much better. So Turbo is going to detect this page refresh um, event, and it's, we are going to let you configure how, to, how do you want to handle those in a declarative way with page directives. So by default, the existing behavior is we are going to reset the scroll to the top left corner of the screen, we are going to replace the body. That's the current turbo behavior. And we are going to let you configure a new method, a refresh method option, so that you can configure morphing, and a new scroll option so that you can configure preserve the state for me, please. Under the hood for morphing, we didn't end up using um, morph DOM. We ended up using idiomorph, which is an alternative library that we found that worked much better in practice because it's not as picky as Morphdon when it comes to demanding IDs for matching one node with other. So Idiomorph was way more seamless in our uh, tests than, than Morphdon. So we are going with Idiomorph, but that's like an implementation data. And we are going to offer uh, a Rails helper so that you can configure this in a more uh, a uh, concise way. So, I'm going to show you a video of, um, of the card table that David already showed in the, in the keynote. I want to make a point about the card table. Uh, card table is a, 
It's a feature from Basecamp 4. It's a Canvas feature, highly interactive. Well, it was released last year. Uh, Alberto Andorin built a first version of this feature in like six, six weeks that we started to use internally. The point I want to make is that it's using full body replacement for most interactions. So that's, and it's a feature that our customers absolutely love. And that was, is modern. It was released last year. So I want to make the point that it's absolutely, going with the default, is absolutely fantastic in most scenarios. For those of you, of you that find yourself spending a lot of time on high fidelity updates. Okay? So this is how it, working, how it works um, with the current body replacement, which is the current uh, turbo behavior. We are going to add a new column. You can see how the horizontal and vertical scroll is going to get reset, which isn't terrible, but it's definitely noticeable. You can see how when it's going to delete the, the, the column it created, exactly the same, scroll reset. It's going to add a new card. It's going to get scroll reset. You can, you can say that the page refresh has happened. Okay? Now, compare that with morphing. Now, it's, this is the new behavior configured in the same page with those page directives. It's going to add a new column, and uh, you can see how it felt totally seamless. It felt like a targeted update, like an extreme, extreme action uh, appending a column uh, container there. It's going to delete it. It's the same. Looks like a stream action deleting the column. It's going to add a new card. You can see how the sensations are fantastic. Okay? There is the new card. So the very key, <laughs> the very key feature here is that we didn't have to touch the code for achieving this. It's a declarative configuration. And we got this new behavior uh, you know, for free. So this is the actual controller. It, it was doing a redirect back to the card table board. It's still doing a redirect back to the card table board. We didn't ch change anything there or in the view. Um, so this is the, the, the key feature. You get a behavior that, uh, that might remind you of getting a turbo stream um, action behavior, but you get it for free. That's the whole thing. Because of course we could do this before with stream action, but the, the key benefit is not having to, to create those. Okay, now let me talk about broadcasting changes. Broadcasting changes is about when something changes in your server, and you want to communicate that change to the existing browser sessions using your application, you can broadcast a change so that the browsers reflect. So for example, in Hey, when an email arrives, we want to broadcast that change to the, to the customer so that they can see this, the, the new email appearing without having to reload the page. So uh, right now, Turbo supports broadcasting changes with stream actions. Okay? You can um, render a stream action when responding to an HTTP request, or you can broadcast a stream action uh, through WebSockets to push it through WebSockets into, into the browser. So um, what was the problem when I was thinking about broadcasting uh, changes in the new calendar application? Exactly the same problem I had with uh, the partial updates. Each stream, uh, each stream I wanted to update was going to be a lot of hassle because the scroll, uh, sorry, the rendering was complex. And I had a, an explosion of uh, broadcasting uh, actions to do because we had many elements and many views. So again, it felt like a burden, the same burden I had with partial updates. So um, this, is an, uh, this is an example extracted from the, from the current uh, broadcasting system in the card table to, exp to, 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 exp to try to explain what I mean with this complexity. Uh, this is from the card table, so this is real. This is what, what's running in production. Uh, with the streams, you need to get like, the individual models, for example, cards and columns. A column contain cards, contains cards in the, in the card table. And you, ha you have to get every event, such as, for example, changing an assignee in a card, creating a card, removing a column. And you need to 
stream the specific DOM action that you want the browser to execute in order to reflect that change live. So we, said, we found that this page refresh with morphing technology was offered an excellent opportunity to vastly simplify this. So we, this is what we are going to do. We are going to introduce a new standard page refresh action. And we are going to let models to broadcast that page refresh action so that when browsers get receive that stream action, they are going to reload the current page. And thanks to morphing, that uh, refresh action is going to feel smooth and, uh, and perform as I showed before, keeping a screen state and with, with, with all the benefits we want. In the case of the card table, we placed that action at the board level, which is at the top of the hierarchy. And we are relying on the touch through, you know, declarative configuration in the, in the containment associations that we were already using for caching, for doll caching, so that changes in the contained models bubble up and end up affecting the board. In practice, what this means is that this is the code uh, we needed to, to use. Again, we are going to have helpers for this in the Rails uh, Turbo gem uh, for the whole broadcasting system in the card table. We were able to replace like 100 plus line of, lines of code with this. This was a tremendous conceptual simplification. And you can see how it looks. So on the right, it's going to perform some actions, such as sorting a card. You can see how the left, uh, the left screen gets updated. It's going to make some assignments. It is scrolling up and down to show how smooth that is. No interruptions. You just, guess, you just get the new elements appear. It's going to rename a card, and you can see how it gets renamed. And now this is very interesting. It's going to add new steps to a card those steps are going to get reflected in the, in the other board. Now, it's going to complete them. You can see them completed. It's going to, uh, it's going to uh, unwatch, stop watching the board, and that's going to be reflected. So those two last examples are very interesting because those are uh, broadcast operations that are not supported in the existing production version. And they are not supported because with stream actions, when you work on broadcasting stream actions, each stream action requires work. So naturally, what you do is to focus on the K interactions, on the K uh, broadcast operations, because you can cover everything. With the model I presented, is, this is inverted. You get everything by default. And you actually, if you wanted to exclude things from being broadcasted as page refresh actions, then you would have to work. So tremendous uh, conceptual simplification, and you get uh, more uh, with way less code. OK. So we are going also to reuse the data turbo permanent attribute that Turbo already presents, we are going to keep its semantics, which means maintain this uh, container in the page. But of course, we are going to uh, change the implementation to make this work with morphing. Sometimes you want to mark DOM elements, certain, certain DOM, DOM elements, so that morphing doesn't touch them. I'm going to show you an example to, to, to explain how this works. Imagine that on the left side, uh, imagine that on the left side, I opened that menu. And now on the right side, on the right side, someone edited like the name of the column. You don't want to get the, pop, the popover to close because someone renamed uh, and the page refreshed. So this lets you achieve that, like to keep certain elements from being, from disappear or from being changed when a page refresh happens. And finally, there are scenarios, there are situations where you want to load additional elements in the page after the initial load. A typical example will be pagination. So you might want to, well, load 
the initial uh, screen. Paginate new elements, act on the new elements, and get a page refresh. In that case, you don't want to lose the new sections you loaded uh, dynamically when a page refresh happens. So we are going to introduce this new attribute, uh, value, refresh, reload, with turbo frames. So that if you have turbo frames with a source attribute and with, the, with that uh, attribute flagging them, when a page refresh happens, those turbo frames are going to be refreshed too, and they are going to re be refreshed with morphing. Is that, is that what you have configured? Okay? This is what we are using in the calendar application for pagination. Uh, I won't show the calendar today, but I will, happy, I will be happy to elaborate on this uh, you know, in future documentation or, or blog posts. So, to recapitulate, we are going with a minimal declarative configuration Turbo is going to detect page refreshes uh, automatically, and you will be able to configure how, to, um, how you want to handle them. You will be able to choose morphing and scroll clipping. Um, we are going to, to reuse the data turbo permanent to flag sections as, please don't touch these sections when you are morphing the page. Um, we are going to introduce a new attribute in turbo frames so that you can reload turbo frames with morphing when a page refresh happens. And we are going to introduce a new uh, broadcasting system that is way more simpler and powerful than individual uh, stream actions. So, recovering the chart from, from uh, early in the presentation, what we are doing is we are aiming to improve the default happy path we already have in Turbo. So you are going to get faster page updates for free without having to abandon the programming model, I think, in my opinion, is, is the best we've found so far, which is make, me, make a controller request, render from the programmer perspective, I'm going to render a full page from scratch. Okay, you want to make that perform smooth, great. But for me as a programmer, I'm not thinking in impartial updates. That's not a concern I have. So, uh, so far we've validated this with a gem that we, are been, we have been using in the calendar application internally, that we are already using internally. But during the last week, weeks, we've been working on upstreaming this to, to Turbo. So, Alberto, from 37 signals has uh, now during this presentation opened a couple of pull requests in Turbo and Turbo Rails upstreaming uh, all this stuff. So you are invi invited to check it out, uh, trying it with your applications and provide feedback and let us know how it goes. And finally, to conclude, I want to make a couple of points. <clears throat> I think the front end is an exciting space. And there are several agents that contribute to that. Okay? We have uh, browsers backed up by super powerful uh, companies like pushing the medium forward. We have a lot of smart folks all around the world trying to find new things and trying to push things forward. Um, both in terms of technology and in terms of how we are going to program that technology. Um, I'm looking for improvements that everyone can, can enjoy. And of course, we have standards trying to harness all this innovation. But the thing is, I think there is a double-edged sword in the front end, which is that it's very easy to uh, create shiny things that look amazing, at the demo level, when you are writing a blog post, when you are you know, showing uh, locally how something works, but what, that when you apply at a general application, at a real application, sorry, they fall apart. And I'm remembering the case of uh, React. When React became mainstream, I remember there was a demo uh, many years ago about a dashboard with dozens of widgets, and 
it was showing how you could update those widgets several times per second, and it was super smooth. And it was actually proving how amazing this uh, idea, the innovation of the DOM diff, uh, DOM di the virtual DOM diffing uh, technique that Rail, uh, React popularized. Okay, it was tremendous innovation. But I remember thinking back then, because I was already seasoned enough in single page application issues, I remember thinking, where is the programming model? I mean, this is not solving even one of the problems I have as a programmer. So I think that with Turbo, we have a treasure. I really believe that with Turbo, we have a treasure. The problem is a treasure that you only appreciate when you, you know, experience like the path. It's very hard to appreciate Turbo as a newcomer. With Turbo, we have a way, a fast way of rendering applications. Like the, uh, it solves the problem of the initial rendering very well, which is something that, as you know, React is still trying to figure out. We have a default path that we get, we, that we get by default, which is seamless and that we, it offers great responsiveness. And I believe we are making that path better today. And then we have fantastic options for performing high fidelity updates with stream actions and, and turbo frames. I do expect that with the morphine improvement, stream actions are going to become less necessary, but they are not deprecated by any means but hopefully they're going to be less necessary. So um, for the future, my expectation, uh, I don't know how the future of Turbo is going to, to look. I'm all about innovating. I hope we can keep pushing cool things into Turbo, but I hope we do it at the service of programming happiness. So let's innovate, but also let's simplify, let's unify, let's make things more seamless. So let's Keep programming happiness running the show. Thank you so much. <laughs>